Chapter 7, Article 101 of the Ugandan Constitution mandates the President to give an address to Parliament on the state of the nation. However, there have been concerns that over the past years there's not been much of a difference in the speech that the President gives to the nation. So what needs to change now, or what must change? It's the economy stupid. This was a superlative coined by the Bill Clinton campaign team to unseat George Bush Sr. at the time the U.S. economy was reeling from a recession. Could this message gain traction amongst the masses in Uganda as the opposition seeks to unseat the incumbent? Really important is to say these are the strategies that are different from the ones that we've tried for the last three years that are going to move us from point A to point B in 2016 and beyond. As the president prepares for tomorrow's State of the Nation address, the prospect of an economy whose benefits can trickle down the underclass remains a challenge. Dr. Fred Muhammadza, an economist, fears that unless government enforces fiscal discipline, the citizens will continue to bear the brunt of an economy that favors the political elite. And we're not talking here about just the underinvestment, also saying that government has given 3% of the budget to agriculture. That is even an understatement compared to when government goes and borrows from the commercial banks where the private people were going to borrow for their own agricultural During the 2014 State of the Nation speech, President Yoram Seveni cited the areas of agriculture, industry, services and ICT as priority areas. Did the state live up to its promises? It's really important is to say these are the strategies that are different from the ones that we've tried for the last three years that are going to move us from point A to point B in 2016 and beyond. Professor Joshua Wongoya, a political scholar, says the president must not give a ritualistic speech but offer pragmatic solutions to the country's challenges. The economic outlook has not been rosy with rising inflation for the past three months as a result of the weakening shilling against the dollar and the rise in food prices. Fred Mohomza says as the country sets out its key priorities, especially infrastructure development, it needs to address the growing debt burden. The gulf between the rich and poor is yet another concern. The question of a growing gap between the rich and the poor and a growing sense of class consciousness and class conflict that I observe that could mean very serious political consequences over the next five years post-2016. Barely seven months the polls, the issue of political reforms cannot be pushed to the back burners. For this reason, Rwongoya says the president has a commitment to ensure the political landscape is leveled. The question of human rights and the rule of law should be key as the country prepares for a high octane season of campaigns. Yet, there is a likelihood that the president's speech will be heavier in rhetoric than bread and butter issues. Shilandwuchere, NTV.